All right, everybody, welcome back to the Crossover Thursday edition of Locked On Giants, Locked On Browns. He is Jeff Lloyd of Locked On Browns. I am Patricia Trena of Locked On Giants, and we are going to outline our respective team's keys to victory. And Jeff, let's start with you. Well, I think there's a couple things that you know point out to me. Look, if I'm bringing up offensive line play, and it's not been where it's been in the past for the Cleveland Browns, you know, worried about guys certainly like Dexter Lawrence, uh, certainly Brian Burns, uh, you know, your, your other pass rushers for the you know Giants. The Browns are going to be tested until this offensive line starts to look like you know what has been you know the standard here for this team. And I understand it's going to be an offensive line in flux. You know, Dewan Jones is now entrenched. He is going to be the right tackle from here on. You're not going to take what this young man has done to this point and move him because the Browns do see a chance where they are going to get some financial relief on that offensive line by having Dewan Jones there. On the defensive side of the ball, um, you you have to kind of look at what Malik Neighbors does. And I'm, I don't think anybody's really surprised. I mean, the polish that he had at LSU. Um, I don't know if it is just an LSU thing, but these guys are definitely emotional players. Um, you know, certainly covered Jarvis. I've covered Odell. You know, you see Malik Neighbors. You definitely see, you know, some passion to him. You know, the drop and, you know, basically didn't want to talk to him. I mean, nobody needs to be told you drop the ball and say, oh, you know, attaboy. Look, players know what they do with, you know, do right and what they do wrong. But he is going to be somebody. And I think the Browns, look, they have – three good top corners. So you're going to show him Denzel Ward, who's a top corner in the NFL. You have a burgeoning talent in Martin Emerson. So if there's an opportunity for Martin Emerson to go out there, who's a little more physical, got a little more length, you know, can beat on a guy, you're going to want to lean on the rookie a little bit. That's the way you do it. If you're going to line him up in a slot, Greg Newsom, you know, he'll play some slot. Greg Newsom plays slot, you know. So you want to keep mixing it up, certainly, you know, on a player like that. And look, you know, I think they're going to be extremely aggressive on Daniel Jones. Look, you don't have to just say, I mean, you say Jim Schwartz, you know, it's going to be aggressive anyway. Um, but you know, there's maybe difference where, Hey, it's Patrick Mahomes. We can only be so much aggressive before it bites us in the can or it's Daniel Jones. You know what? I'm going to keep attacking him to make him prove that he can, you know, basically make me pay for being this aggressive. They like to play man. They like to rush the passer. It's a simple thing. Obviously, Pat, you, you know, his time in the Eagles, you know, you've seen this in action plenty, plenty of times, but those are the two biggest things is controlling, you know, certainly the New York Giants pass rush. And then if you're the Cow the Browns, and this is something they usually do pretty well is we are going to take your best playmaker away from you and make you find another way to beat us. Yes, indeed. And, you know, you mentioned uh, the pass rush with Daniel Jones. That's actually something that I'm interested in seeing play out. Now, the Giants offensive line, I said this on my show the other day. I said, Giant fans, if I had told you that the Giants offensive line would actually be ranked not in the bottom third, but actually a little higher, <laughs> would you believe me? And and I, I haven't checked the responses yet, but the Giants offensive line has been pretty solid. All right. Not top five just yet, but it's a case of all five guys. You know, it's interesting. All five guys, you look at the individual performances outside of maybe Andrew Thomas, all five guys are, are playing, you know, okay, passable, but put them together and they are getting the job done. And that's going to be so important because the Browns have a top five pass rush. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Browns are ranked in the, somewhere in the top five with total sacks. So that's going that to be something, point, yes. obviously, to keep an eye on. Can they protect Daniel Jones? Because, look, when that rush comes at Daniel – he is known to panic. He is known to throw the ball away uh, or to throw it into harm's, you know, a window that he has no business throwing it into. So how is he going to respond to the pass rush if they are able to penetrate the offensive line? That's definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, from the other side of the ball, uh, I guess you can go the, the same way. Like, like you said, it all starts in the trenches. Now, the Giants' pass rush so far has been kind of quiet. We haven't really seen Kayvon Thibodeau and uh, Brian Burns really come out and, you know, set the league on fire. Sometimes it takes a little startup for that to happen, and then they say sacks and pressures and all that stuff come in bunches. But the Giants are going to need to get after that offensive line of the Cleveland Browns and get into the backfield, rattle Deshaun Watson or whoever ends up playing quarterback, and just, you know, take away his options because, look, the Giants' defensive secondary remains a big, big problem. It really does. They've got Deontay Banks, who's, who's a good young player. Dory Jackson will probably start now, especially if Cordell Flott is not healthy, uh, Nick McFly, if Nick McLeod is not healthy. But that group 
has been shaky and they are, you know, that it's just kind of how things kind of worked out with the giants to where, you know, that front seven now, that front seven of the Giants defense has got to get after the passer and force some mistakes because the longer these guys have to hold the ball and, and make plays down the field, the more likely the Giants are going to end up getting in trouble. So we'll have to see about that. Um, and, and if they can, you know, um, protect the back end of the defense. And then just real quick, um, we mentioned before about the Giants with the kicking situation. Uh, they have signed Greg Joseph uh, to, to be their kicker with uh, Graham Gano ailing. So uh, just, you know, thought I would throw that out there. But Former Cleveland yeah, Brown. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it sounds like to me, Jeff, it's going to be a battle of the trenches that's going to result, you know, going to determine this game. Would you agree? I would think so. And, you know, you know, certainly, you know, Giants have played, obviously, on the offensive line good to this point. You know, the Browns hoping to get better in that aspect. So, you know, it's certainly usually most of the time it kind of does come down to that. Um, and then, you know, uh, as you know, both quarterbacks have had their share of mistakes that have cost their team ball games. That's going to be certainly something else that we have to keep your eye on. All right. Well, both teams need this win. It's going to be uh, – quite the clash. The Giants probably need a little bit more than Cleveland, but you know, I'm sure Cleveland won't turn away a win. So uh, Jeff, you want to throw out a quick prediction before we say goodbye? Um, we usually save these for the end of the week, but you know, I look, it's inexcusable. You know, this is a team in the New York Giants that are 0 and 2. Um, the Browns last year only lost one game at home. They've already lost one game at home this year. Um, I don't, you know, they have the Dolphins later in the year. They have the Chiefs later in the year. They certainly have all their division opponents. I don't think this is going to be the one. Um, I don't think the Browns are where they're going to play like clean and efficient yet. So you're going to get one of those, you know, field goal combination scores. But if you wanted to say 26, 13, 26, 14, something like that. But the Browns like to get ahead and then they like to go ahead and play their nickel and dime and just, you know, rotate in pass rushers. And that would be the ideal plan for them, of course. All right. Well, you know, I said that if the Giants didn't win the first two games, I would have a hard time picking them to win. I got to see better football. I saw a little bit of improvement, just a smidge, you know, some bright spots here and there, particularly on offense. But until this team shows me they can play complimentary football, until they show me that, you know, they can stop the run, I don't know that I can pick them. So I'm going to get the edge here to the Cleveland Browns. I'm going to say 28-13. 